Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going into some works by Jacques Lacan. So Jacques Lacan was a psychoanalyst after Freud, and I've gone a little bit about him on this channel, but I've mostly just touched on him and haven't really gotten really into his concepts. Um, and today this is going to be kind of like an introduction video, um, going into his idea of the unconscious and the split of the unconscious and the conscious. Um, so this should be pretty easy to understand, or at least it's going to be readily easy compared to a lot of Lacan's other concepts. Um, so basically, Lacan goes back to Descartes and he says, okay, Descartes' idea of cogito ergo sum. Very common phrase throughout all of philosophy after the 17th century. And this means, I think, therefore, I am cogito, I think, um... Ergo, therefore, sum, I am. Cogito, ergo, sum. Okay. So Lacan says Descartes' issue with this idea is not that the cogito is bad, that we go from a sense of doubt to certainty, but that Descartes posits an autonomous ego, that he posits an illusion of unity of the, of the cogito. And that's Lacan's main issue, is that Descartes views that there is an illusion of unity, and Lacan views this illusion as the split subject, the subject of the unconscious and the subject of the conscious, okay? Or rather, the subject of the statement, the conscious, versus the subject of enunciation, the unconscious. So this would be Lacan's kind of take on Descartes' idea of cogito. Now, you can take this as Lacan taking Descartes forward and saying, Descartes is correct about the cogito. We go from a sense of doubt to certainty, but that Descartes was wrong about the unification of the subject. Or you can say, um, as Lacan did in his work, Eclis, which just means writings in English, um, that uh, in a couple of various essays, he discusses the idea of kind of rephrasing Descartes, kind of playing with words a little as he does. And he says that, I think where I am not, I think where I am not. And this would be the idea of I think would be my con. The idea of I think in this sense would be my conscious thinking, okay? So I think, like, I'm going to go to the store. I get in my car and go to the store. I think I want to go to the store. Now, the second I, I think where I am not. Where am I not? Well, I'm not in my unconscious. My unconscious is directing my action, but I myself am not directing my unconscious. The I that I assert when I say I'm going to the store seems to me an illusion of unity of the unconscious and conscious. That's Lacan's whole point is that I think where I am not. I think where I am not. Therefore, I am where I do not think. <laughs> I think where I'm not. Therefore, I am where I do not think. Because I think where I'm not, again, we, we say that I'm going to the store. We posit this illusion of I. I am where I do not think. Where I do not think is my unconscious, but I am there still. My unconscious is still an aspect of my subjectivity. So this would be Lacan's idea of the split between the unconscious and the conscious, reflected through Descartes' cogito. And um, this, this can be explored further um, in Lacan's understanding of how psychoanalysis does not need to throw away the cogito and all this stuff. No, psychoanalysis needs to say, rather than say, I think, we say, it thinks. It thinks. The unconscious thinks where I am. Where I am in the world, my being, my existence, my unconscious thinks. It revolves, my subjectivity revolves around the unconscious. So when we say that I think where I am not, therefore I am where I do not think, we are saying that where I claim to be in the world is an illusion of unity between my unconscious and my consciousness, okay? And further, when we say that the, the, the Guido from Descartes is accurate, we mean it accurate insofar as we rephrase it to be, it thinks where I am, or it thinks therefore I am, or it thinks where I am not. All of these would follow from what I already said. So this would be Lacan's idea of the Kagido and the split of the Kagido. And this is not, he's not the first to do this, of course. Um, I mean, uh, Hegel, Kant, I mean, all these people question Descartes' concept of I think, therefore I am. 
Um, many in philosophy don't hold this, though. Um, where you are taught, like, in, in introductory philosophy classes, usually, that, like, um, Descartes, this is, like, a revolutionary concept, which at the time it was, but very quickly pushback happened. Like, me asserting that I think, therefore I am, what is the sense of connection between the body and the mind? And this was Descartes' idea of the dualism. The, the metaphysics of dualism would be that there is a um, mind and that there is a body, and the mind is immaterial, and the body is material. And there is a sense of unity between the mind and the body. Now, this would be kind of, this is what Descartes said, because he believed that there was a unity. He believed that the, um, I think I think it was the, uh, oh man, I think it was the penal gland. It was some gland in the brain, um, which Descartes believed ensured the unity of the mind and body. Now, this kind of phrasing from Lacan would be that illusion of unity because, of course, there is no gland in the brain which ensures unity of the mind and the body. That isn't that isn't something we found in science or whatever. So this would be Lacan's idea of even Descartes, if you use Descartes' logic and then apply a Lacanian sense to it, Descartes even kind of recognized, or we recognize now through modern science, that Descartes even had this illusion of unity in the sense that he posited that this gland kind of created that unity between the mind and body, which we now know not to be true. So this would be kind of applying Lacan's idea even further back and using Descartes' own logic to then kind of refute him. Um, okay, so that, that was a lot, but um, we can kind of explain Lacan's context for this, is that he saw, um, at the time of his writing, largely in the 60s when he was writing Ecli, and um, the 50s, a creek came out in 67. Um, a lot of the essays were from like the 40s, 50s, 60s. So um, Lacan was writing at this time against a um, brand of psychology called ego psychology or I psychology. Um, it began by Franz Alexander in the 20s and that kind of picked up um, heavily in like the 40s and stuff. And it was very anglicized, meaning that Americans and like British people loved uh, ego psychology. And Lacan was not a fan of Britain, British and American culture. He saw it as um, antithetical to, uh, to psychoanalysis, which Freud did too. Um, but so Lacan saw that American and British culture kind of corrupted psychoanalysis and made it into this like super individualistic understanding of um, humans and like how we interact with the world. And so Lacan's issue was that um, ego psychology posited this autonomous ego that although they claim to be descendants of Freud and they're like, oh yeah, we're totally doing what Freud said. Lacan says that they're not, that they were, they were positing an autonomous ego, an ego separate from the sense of illusion of unity of the unconscious and the conscious subject, or the subject of the statement, the conscious subject, I am going to the store, versus the unconscious subject would be the articulated subject, the way I say it, the, the phraseology that I make, all these different things would be the unconscious um, subject or the subject of articulation. Um, so we can go further here and discuss um, the uh, kind of the view Freud had of the cogito. So Lacan says for, uh, through Freud that Freud actually kind of posited this itself, that the unconscious is the unity of the cogito. So the unconscious is the unity of the ego. So you have the ego, and again, we said split and all that. So Lacan says the unconscious equals cogito equals consciousness. As such, the unconscious is both the ego and the consciousness. So the ego would be this sense of like your place of being in the world, the various identifications that you make. But Lacan's whole problem with this is that the sense of being in the world and the identifications that you make and the way you see yourself is all imaginary. It's not real. You, are, you engage with the world through language, but you present yourself to the world through imaginary tendencies. The clothes you wear are meant to appeal to the other, which would be just like the amorphous concept of society, culture, language, um, morality, any of these concepts. Further, it is an imaginary identification because when you make an appeal to something, you yourself are not like the originary um, creator of that. You are 
creating a simulacra of trying to appeal to a past group who did something. Those that were fashion trends and follow fashion trends are appealing to that simulacra of what the fashion trend once was and continuing to try and follow that fashion trend, which itself was never an originary fashion trend, but was always created by someone else who was trying to follow the fashion trend. A little bit confusing, I'll say it again. So the person who's following the fashion trend is trying to appeal to a person following the fashion trend who themselves is trying to appeal to a person following the fashion trend. And it goes on ad infinitum until eventually we create this illusion that someone made up the fashion trend. But the whole point is that no, every subject is continuing to long to follow the fashion trend. This would be that imaginary identification which Lacan posits as the unity, uh, as the illusion of unity of the subject of the Kogito. So that would kind of be uh, an overview kind of of Lacan's idea of Kogito. I'm going to go through a quick summary basically of the important parts. So, Kogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am. That's Descartes' formulation. Lacan's formulation is, I think where I am not, therefore, I am where I do not think. I think consciously where I am not, my unconscious. Therefore, I do not think where I am. I think again, and th this would be fr flipping it again. So then you have the I think, the unconscious, where I am not. Again, I think, therefore, I think where I am not, therefore I am where I do not think. Where I do not think is my unconscious. Because my conscious thinking is not in the unconscious, but the unconscious thinking is also not in the consciousness. Only through, like, a sense of um, influence, but the conscious and unconscious thinking are different, kind of. But then Lacan goes further and says that, no, actually... Like, a Guido is the unconscious. The, the, the unconscious is that unity. The unconscious includes both the conscious and the unconscious. Okay? So then, Lacan would go further and say that if you go back to Descartes and say that Descartes believed that the, the penal gland instituted that dualism between mind and body, that that itself is an illusion of unity. So, using Descartes' own logic, we hit that illusion of unity. Finally, Lacan pushed against the idea of ego psychology or I psychology, which he saw as individualistic and neglected the importance of the unconscious and believed in an autonomous ego arriving from Descartes. So that's kind of Lacan's Cogito as a summary. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to do it. Uh, this video is a little bit more difficult to understand, but again, Lacan is not an easy thinker. I wouldn't know. It's not easy. And so this is a concept which you can't really explain easily um, because Lacan is not an easy thinker, basically. But I think I've tried to give some examples and tried to kind of break it down more and go further than Lacan did. I've kind of gone into what he didn't say but implied in his writing um, is what I think. As Lacan says, it's what you don't say that gives meaning to the sentence. Um, but yeah, so... That's going to do it for this video. Um, you can subscribe and like the video uh, down below. And thank you. Have a great day.